All right, guys, so this is a bit of an experiment we're doing here, um, no pun intended, because uh, what we're doing here is I'm going to demonstrate the procedure for the heat of fusion of ice lab, uh, which you see in front of you here. And by doing that, I'm going to provide you with some data that you're then going to use to actually calculate the heat of fusion in class. So this will walk you through the procedure. This will give you some sample data to work with. And then you're going to use that data to learn how much energy it takes for ice to melt. So it's a very simple experiment. Frankly, it's, it's one that's not terribly exciting. So we figured this was a good way to deliver it to everybody. So uh, what we're going to do here, um, I have scrolled down to the data table for this lab. And it's a very simple experiment. Here we have a beaker and a cup, which you see right here. And... I'm just going to get the mass of that, uh, which I am recording here, and you're going to have to trust me on this, as 109.54 grams. Now, what I'm going to do now is I have this, I have this graduated cylinder full of about 100 milliliters of warm water. Basically, I just ran the hot water under the tap and put this in. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the beaker, to my styrofoam cup and the beaker. And now I'm going to record the mass of that. Now it looks like I have a slightly more than 100 milliliters, slightly more than 100 grams, but I'm going to go ahead and fill in 210, 210.69 grams. And so in a minute, I'm going to use that to figure out the mass of water that I started with. But what I want to do now is I'd like to figure out the initial temperature of the water. So here I have a temperature probe uh, hooked up to a GoLink. Uh, it's very similar to what we used in class last week for the specific heat lab. And so I'm going to put this in the warm water. And I'm going to go ahead and take it off the balance for now. And I'm going to toggle over here to Logger Pro. Uh, you can see on the temperature readout here that I'm, I'm going to wait for it to stabilize. Uh, the procedure recommends that we take about 45 seconds to make sure that the temperature stabilizes. And so it looks like we're going to start at about 34 degrees Celsius, maybe a little bit more, once it once it levels off, we'll uh, go ahead and start our experiment. Okay, so it looks like we've leveled off here at about 34.2 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to enter that as the initial water temperature. What we've done basically is we've started with warm water. The procedure recommends about 30 degrees Celsius, so I, I went a little higher in the interest of time. And so we start at 34.2 degrees Celsius, and what we're going to do is we're going to add, add a handful of ice. I uh, used my privilege as a coach to uh, go get the sweet crushed ice from Kevin's office, from our trainer's office. And uh, I'm going to use a chunk of this to cool this water down. And so all I'm going to do is go back to Logger Pro, and I've opened up a specific template for this lab. So this is going to show us exactly the data we need to see. And what I'll do is I'll start recording the temperature by hitting this green play button. And what's going to happen is it's going to start, numbers are going to start showing up fast and furious down here on the left. And it's going to start graphing the temperature as we go. Um, so looks like maybe I need to uh, amend this temperature a little bit because it's gotten a little cooler since we started, which is to be expected. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and start recording. And a few seconds after I start recording, I'm going to go ahead and add the ice, just to give it a baseline. Alright, so I'm going to add my handful of ice here. And we're going to see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and stir that around a little bit with the stirring rod, with, with the uh, temperature probe. And we can see that the ice, obviously, as, as we might expect, is causing the temperature to go down really, really quickly. Uh, we should expect that this whole experiment will be done 
in less than five minutes. That's the amount of time that we have on the clock here. And so what we're looking for is for these two systems, the cold ice and the warm water, to reach thermi thermal equilibrium. And so we would expect this graph to flatline as the temperature stabilizes in this experiment. And it looks like we may have already gotten there. Uh, we got there in about a minute. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it till about the hundred second mark just to make sure. And so that will be the final temperature of the mixture we have here. So give it about 12 more seconds here. Looks like we're at about a minute and a half. And the temperature hasn't really budged since. And you'll have to trust me on this, but it looks like all the ice is melted. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it at an even 100 seconds. And so we notice here that the temperature went from 33.6. And I should probably start there for my initial temperature, since that was what we got for the initial reading. And then the final water temperature, if we analyze this graph here, and I believe this is going to be the one. Yes, so it looks like um, we can actually get a little more specific here. Um, so looks like the minimum temperature, uh, if you can see this on the screen, is 17.76 degrees, and the maximum is 33.64. So I'm going to use that very precise data that we're, we're given from the temperature probe, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in the experiment. So um, you're going to use that, of course, to figure out your delta T, and we're pretty familiar with this delta T calculation by now. We just take the final temperature minus the initial temperature, and that will give us our delta T, our change in temperature. Um, now, the last thing I have to do uh, in order to give you the data that you need to work with here is to measure the mass of everything that we finished with. And so in row C here, we're going to have the mass of the beaker, the cup, and the water. I realized I forgot a comma here. Sorry about that. And so... I'm going to record that mass, and we're going to be able to use that to get all of the other masses. And I get that mass to be 229.39 grams. So that means we used uh, not quite 20 grams of ice to cool down that water, and we did it pretty quickly. So I uh, just want to show you the graph one more time. Uh, we see here that we very quickly, as soon as I added the ice, because we can see that I added the ice right here, uh, we very quickly saw a change in temperature until the temperature stabilized because both systems, the ice and the warm water, were in thermal equilibrium. Now, we're going to walk you through some calculations in class today that are going to help you figure out what that means for the heat of fusion of ice. That is, how much energy per gram it takes to melt ice, or how much energy we have to take away to freeze it. So I hope that was helpful and entertaining, and uh, have a great day. Thanks.